So today on Project Shop, we're finally going to attempt to fire up this milling machine. It's been a long time coming. Um, so basically what we need to do is get some 220 over here, which I got an extension cord. Then I need to make a plug that we can plug into it that's going to go to like a junction box where we split the 220, send two legs to the machine and two legs to the phase converter. So how this works is... You basically, you run two legs um, right to the machine or right to the, uh, an outlet. We're actually going to use this. So I scrounged around the shop and I found not everything that I want, but enough to pretty much get it started. Um, so we got some plug ends for the big plug, some plugs for the milling machine some wire to run everything back and forth we do have some switches some 30 amp switches and then like a junction box where we can do the split in and whatever we need to do or we might even be able to do it in here i'm not sure um we're going to take a look at all this here in a second and if i remember correctly there's some really good paperwork inside of here and i've actually talked to this company on the phone i got the engineer on the phone when i was having issues great company uh great customer service and uh he kind of schooled me a lot on three phase so uh another thing i want to show you thank god i made a video years ago um mill machine uh repair part one so this will actually be like part two of a video i did four years ago i can't believe it's been four years and if you go back and watch this video and the video I did right before it, which is how I generate three phase electric, man, it just shows parts of my shop, um, my first shop that I started YouTube in. And I really had that shop dialed in and it, it almost brought a tear to my eye um, that I had to move out of there. And basically um, what happened was that Scandemic came along and for like a month there was no work going on my lease was up and they were jacking the rent up so i didn't know what to do so i basically just said you know what i'm gonna put everything in storage and uh i'm gonna work from home until you know this uh whole thing plays out and it's a kind of a good thing i did because it was really slow there for a while um if you look at the videos right after this and that time frame um that the scandemic was going on uh i really wasn't doing much recycling you know i was just kind of chilling having fun at the house um but the little bit of scrapping i did do i made enough money to pay my bills um but i, I definitely wouldn't have been able to afford that shop unfortunately by myself because you know for you guys that uh don't know this is like just a part-time gig i don't work full time i don't matter of fact i haven't picked up scrap in two weeks I only pick up scrap when the phone rings. Um, but I do have something really cool coming up here uh, <laughs> that I'm supposed to go pick up. Um, but anyway, in this video, I basically was testing the resistance and the ohms on this motor. Okay, so what we're going to do here, and I should have done this as soon as I got the motor back. We're going to pull this cover. We're going to do the same test and see if the leg that was burnt up in that video looks good. And then we can kind of... Uh, get a game plan on uh, how we're going to get all this set up so um, basically what I want to do here today is just get it running I want to get the uh, phase converter fired up and what we're going to do is use one of these switches to actually engage the phase converter you want to be able to turn this thing on and off and then um, we're going to send the power to this plug and then that twist lock will go up to the machine i don't know what happened to the plug on the machine thank god i keep plugs i found one in my uh safety deposit box over there so we have this is the power cord this is going to go up to the motor and basically the power is going to come right back out and um i think it's going to go to these ones and then these are going to go back to the motor it's going to come to this switch this switch will be reversible. It'll basically just swap these legs around. And then uh, that's how you get your forward and reverse on a three phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that cover. 
I'm going to pop this cover. I'll show you the paper. I'm pretty sure there's paperwork in here. Um, let me see here. Oh, oh yeah. Nice paperwork here. All right, I'll get all this out and kind of get this stuff laid out how we're going to do it. And then I went and bought um, some stuff to actually clean the mill. We got some rust converter, some evapo rust. Uh, I got this at the automotive store. It was the only, I couldn't find this stuff anywhere. So they had a little can, but Home Depot had this stuff. So hopefully this stuff works good. And I'll tell you what, man, man, I can't go into Home Depot without dropping a hundred dollar bill, man. This, this, this sponge, this little bucket of stuff with a little scrubby, the scotch pads, this cool little thing, and this bucket of cheap ass towels. I'll never buy these again. Let me just show you, make sure you get a good view. Don't ever buy these. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, it was like over a hundred bucks. I'm pretty sure that was it. I really didn't buy, oh, I bought this right here. I didn't know if I was gonna need it, and then I went and I, I found another one and uh the other uh, another end um scrounging up some parts but check this out and this really just kind of irks me okay you see this stuff over here genuine 100 percent u.s manufacturing okay now if you look at that and i will say these are very good quality rags okay i like these when you put them up you know you kind of see through them but you know but then you look and it says made in the u.s of u.s and or non-us materials so at least they're manufacturing them in the usa or at least they're state net on here um but they are bringing in other materials which is fine at least they're recycling it you know it says made with 45 percent recycled fibers now let's go on to this thing and this irks me so bad man look at this they got the u.s flag on it. it says usa but when you look at that fine print i don't know if it's going to come in on here but it says converted and packaged in the usa what kind of cheap ass cop out is that man they just trying to portray themselves basically what they probably did is ordered these towels from somewhere china 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 they came in, okay, and then they probably ordered these boxes from somewhere. China, big league. And they came in, and then they just slapped it together and shipped it off to Home Depot. Now, look at this. Look at this cheap ass shit, okay? This stuff here is like paper thin. It literally is paper thin. You can see right through it. It feels like crap. It just looks like crap, okay? Don't even, don't even try to buy these index shop towels. Not only that, the damn thing is supposed to be like a round thing in there. Somehow, in this box, which is not crushed, somehow, this thing is flat in here. Like someone flattened it. It got flattened somehow, and they still shoved it in the box, okay? I don't know, but that's some bullshit. That's a bullshit label. Um, th that should be like outlawed, okay? You know where this is probably made? China. Okay. And, uh, you know, I have a thing about things made in China. China. That's just a communist country. You're supporting communists and basically uh, slave labor, man. Them people are fucked up over there, man. I feel bad for them people and their work conditions and uh, how, like, now this is just my understanding. I'm not sure how this really works, but apparently if you have a business over there, the business is part of the state meaning the ccp or whatever it is that that uh winnie the pooh looking motherfucker is uh part of your business somehow and that business directly supports you know what i'm saying the communist party so i ain't for all that and uh, i think more things should be made not just in america but locally wherever you're from you know what i'm saying i know there's a lot of people on this channel that watch me from all over the place but uh your country should be supplying and manufacturing and making most of your own shit unless it's some like real specialty item that can't be manufactured locally in your own country man put your own people to work why why is one country getting all the work you know what i'm saying and making everybody fucking poor anyway sorry about the rant we're gonna get back to making some three phase 
and hopefully I don't electrocute the shit out of myself. Okay, so I was correct, and there was some really nice paperwork in here. Uh, definitely, please read. This just tells you um, all the different things that you need to do. Um, I've pretty much just read over all this real quick. And uh, a lot of good information on here. And not only has it got a good diagram right here, uh, this is the one we'll be using. They show you how you can be running two rotor phases in series and then it uh, has a whole troubleshooting guide and uh, this is how I went through all of this stuff in the beginning and that's how I found out I had a burned up leg on my three phase motor so basically what you have here is your single phase service I, mean, I don't know if that's coming in so basically they're just telling you the circuit breakers you, you should be using um, the switches and whatnot um, now we don't have everything that we need here um, we, we are gonna have a switch on the rotor phase um, but basically you're gonna we're gonna come off of the um, you got your neutral and your two hot your two 110s so you got your 220 and as you can see one's going straight to the um, machine and uh, then you have one going uh, straight to the phase converter. And then there's only one line coming off the phase converter going over to, they're showing an optional three phase distribution panel. We don't have that uh, at the moment. We're, we're eventually we're gonna set this up nice and probably set this phase converter up because this is a 10 horse and we can potentially run both of these machines at the same time. Um, or what we'll do is just basically maybe hook both of these up and just have, you know, two different circuits, you know, and so they're not running off of one machine. But here's what we got. So we need to plug in everything. We're gonna use this plug, a piece of that wire. We're gonna bring it into this box right here. We're gonna call that our distribution block and then um, we're gonna bring it uh, out of there we're gonna take two one tens and a ground straight to this outlet then we're gonna take two one tens and a ground or basically the 220 into this switch so that we can turn the phase converter on and off like this now I don't know I think this is missing parts I'm not sure, but for what we're doing, basically we just need to make a connection. And I think this will do it. This is rated for 30 amps. I think this is all just a 20 amp system. So the switch will be plenty for what we're doing. Um, and then out of this, well, this is gonna go to the phase converter. And then one leg is gonna come back out of the phase converter uh, over to this thing here now what we could do is um, run all of the wires in here that way it goes to the phase converter back out of the phase converter right into here and then out of here into that um, yeah so what I have here is a piece of wood I'm gonna just kind of bolt these things on here so they're not just like loose and flopping around now ultimately what I want to do is take a piece of diamond plate and make a really nice setup I have some rubber isolators I want to mount that on and make just like a little cart uh, with an extension cord um, I might just use that cord that we made and that way this thing has its own cord right to the right to the 220 or we'll just leave it with a little short stubby and we'll have to bring the power to it you know this is all temporary this is just stuff I had laying around the shop so um, you know we're not we're, we're trying not to spend any more money than we have to I'm already a hundred dollars in cleaning supplies and a plug and I didn't even need a plug. I can take that back. That plug wasn't cheap either. I think that was like over 20 bucks. I actually have one here that I found in a shop 
looking around for other things and that's why I started cleaning the shop is because I don't want to be buying shit that I already got you know but I, I I'm gonna need that so I'm not gonna return that because I will use it for another project I got that other five horse motor that we're gonna use for um, the granulator actually now coming over here um, let me see if I can get this up here somehow so I was worried that these little dog legs um, I, I don't I couldn't remember if I left them in there or not because I did take them out um, so let me I'm gonna turn the GoPro off real quick and then flip it upside down and hang it off of this so you can see what I'm doing okay so I'm pretty sure we have to take these little dog bones off otherwise we're just gonna get some uh, generic readings These are all little brass screws. Let's do a continuity test. Okay. So these are the ones that I had nothing. Oh, wow. Okay, if I remember correctly, um, these are the ones, or it was these ones or something. We got good continuity, good continuity. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now, that seems backwards from what I remember testing. I could have swore it was these ones that were burned up, but now they're like this. But I don't think it matters. On a three phase, what happens is um, if your motor's running backwards, you just swap a leg. You know, you just take the 110 input from here and put it over here, which I'm not really sure how all that works, but uh, this is a step above what we had before. We never got them readings. Let's check the ohms. Let's ohm this thing out. Um, we were backwards now that we're testing over here Seven six Is that a point I can't see four point six Let me see if I can get a better reading Bam, what do we got? 4.0 4.0 Four Now I'm gonna put this back together and then I'm going to basically wire this up. Oh, wow, look, my crown marks are still there. Red, black. I marked these with a crown. White, I see some white on there. Three, these are numbered. I can't see a number on that one. This is number one. It really doesn't matter, but I do see like a number one all numbers we're just gonna put them on there I'll try to get it back the way it was um, gotta go find a nut I don't know if this one came yeah I'm pretty sure these came in the bottom I gotta get a wrench and loosen this up I think these are gonna clamp the wire um, so I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna get the wires in here. We're gonna wire this up and get the plug on there and then we'll start wiring the three phase generator. Okay, here we go. What we got going on here is a uh, nice looking wired mill. So I got the plug somewhere over here. We got the plug all wired in. Um, 
Now, I was gonna leave that open, but that's pretty much straightforward in there. Um, I should not have to get back into there. Um, I wired it just the way it was when I opened it the first time. And uh, hopefully we don't have any issues. If I do have to swap a leg, I think it's gonna be easy for me just to open that panel and swap a leg over here somewhere. I don't know, we'll figure it out. If I do gotta open the panel, it's two, just two screws. But what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna screw this to this wood panel. I know this wood panel is kind of big and I don't even know where this came from. We were using it for targets, I guess. I don't know. There's a man and a, and a target. Uh, <laughs> so basically I'm just gonna put this back over there in the corner or I might even temporarily secure it. I think I'm gonna secure it right here. You know, that way, hopefully, there's enough plug on that. I can reach it over here and plug in. And uh, matter of fact, we'll have to check that out before I mount this anywhere. But I am going to mount those uh, boxes right on here. And like I said, this is just temporary until I can get all the proper parts. We just want to see if this thing will actually start up. Okay, this is where we're at. So I got some brain food in me and I kind of thought on this for a second. This is what I'm gonna do because I don't want this thing kind of vibrating around. And uh, even though we don't have everything I need, I want everything to kind of be somewhat nice and uh, coherent. So I'm gonna take this piece of plywood and I'm gonna cut like 16 inches off of it. I'm gonna use this piece of angle and I'm gonna make like an L. Okay, we're gonna mount the rotophase to these isolators that I recovered from some um, generators. And then um, we're gonna, uh, well, actually we're gonna bolt them down first and put the rotophase on top of that. Um, I found some of these, these spacers that I got from the mansion on the beach where I recovered all that copper. I'm just, I was gonna use these bolts, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary. I think I could just send a, um, like I'm gonna drill a hole in here and then just send a wood screw up into the bottom of that. These really ain't going anywhere. These are more important here. Um, and then I found a couple little fit-ins so we can somewhat be compliant with some type of electrical code, which, I don't know what that is and hopefully we don't burn nothing down <laughs> now ultimately i really like to make this out of diamond plate you know i do have some really nice i got some uh this is a four by eight i think that's a four by eight sheet of diamond plate and this is a four by ten sheet of diamond plate uh, but for now, for what we're doing, we're just going to mock it up on this wood. The wood will actually be like an isolator, so we don't, I don't know. I don't think we're going to have any issues, but, you know, it'll be easy just to get it on here. We'll get it all worked out, and then once we get it worked out where we have all the proper parts, we'll go ahead and, um, you know, we'll make something nice with the, with the diamond plate. And with the diamond plate, I might even do... Uh, we might stack the rotor phases. I might put that one, put a little shelf, put the other one, and then we can just kind of wire them up, have disconnects, whatever we need. Um, and then, you know, we can run the two machines at the same time if we have to. Um, and I've, um, I'm gonna talk to the guy. Last time I talked to the guy, I got these machines. He said he had a buddy that had a bigger lathe and uh, that's something we definitely gonna need in here because this lathe uh, just isn't gonna cut it. We need some big boy shit, man. Um, you know, we wanna be a full service machine shop. You know, not like a CNC shop, but like, you know, if someone's got some custom shit they need, we wanna be able to make it.
Okay, here we go. Um, I got this thing mounted on here. Now I did kind of go ghetto and use some tap cons, but this thing is mounted on isolators and the whole board is mounted on isolating blocks. Now originally I had screwed this rear one into the wood here, but it was like right here on the motor and it was really back heavy. So I moved them all the way to the back basically. And now this thing is stout. I probably am gonna put some type of brace here. I don't think it's gonna really matter. I just wanted to stiffen that up a little bit, just a little. Once I get everything wired in, um, I'll put a little thing there. Now what I'm probably gonna do is mount this thing up here as high as I can, because this is gonna be on the floor. And uh, I don't wanna be bending down to turn this thing on and off. And then what we'll do from there is mount this over here and then we'll, we'll have plenty of room to mount another one underneath of it um if we want to run we want to i don't want to be plugging and unplugging the machines i just want to run one or the other and what i'm thinking about doing is actually adding the other switch and what i can do is um Actually, I don't know if I'll do that. I'll just be conscious enough not to run both machines at the same time until we uh, figure out this thing here. Um, but here's where I'm at. I think I can run power coming in, right? Or we can run it in through the bottom. We're going to run power in this right here. We'll run it up to the top. Split it in here somewhere. Probably over here on the side, we'll we'll see if we can't sneak this splitter in there. Oh, it's too big. I mean, it'll kind of fit there, but we can't get our wires in anywhere else. Um, so on that note, we are going to have to run that box right there unfortunately i was trying to get away with that now i could just use wire nuts i mean you know you know how we roll around here but i would like something uh, that i can screw down unfortunately this isn't gonna work like i thought it was now there's a lot of bullshit in here i wonder if i could just cut all that crap out of there and mount that in there anyway. I don't know. I I I might just do that because I only need this this section up here, and then um, we can split it down here. Well, we're gonna be in the way. Yeah, I think I'm gonna split it first, and then I have some of that armor. So what I can do is since that's four cables it's going to get kind of confusing but i can come out of here with four cables out of that box with four cables right and send two to this machine and send two right to the uh, right to the um this the the outlet this thing right here so I gotta kind of wrap my brain around that. I'm gonna go look for um, uh, 220 cord because I don't want to cut that four cable cord if I really don't have to. And I don't know how much cord I want coming off of this. Like, do I want to run enough cord from here all the way to the closest 220 outlet, which is right there? Or do I just want a small little pigtail coming off and then we bring in the 220 extension cord all the way over? I don't know. I think we're gonna go that route for now. I can always change it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up in here and root through my cable that I have up there and find like, I don't know, maybe a three foot piece, something long enough that can come down 
and and maybe even thicker we want something thicker because we're going to be splitting it off um and then you know i'm thinking doesn't uh, the the freaking power going to that panel right there is so chintzy man the the electric in here that's got an old fpe or fpc fpe panel they're outlawed you can't even put them in or if if there's an issue or if you buy a new home they make you take those out and, and repanel the house um which this place needs to be repaneled um and uh basically this whole thing needs to be rewired but this ain't my place man i got a quote for what was it 1600 or 1800 dollars for a new panel and to run some 220 this side but man why am i going to pay all that money for something that ain't mine so we're just going to run extension cords it's basically the same thing run the, the the wire or run an extension cord what's what's really the difference um i know it's a lot of different connections but you know it's 220 so and we're not pulling a lot of amps you know this thing's three horse uh, i forget what the amps was it wasn't even a lot you know what i'm saying so um anyway i'm going to uh take a break and get some dinner and then i'm going to kind of wrap my brain around this wiring because you know i'm not an electrician man um i'm just a redneck with some tools man i just kind of wing it you know i just go through life winging it <laughs> so hopefully we'll get this thing dialed in here in a minute and uh we definitely gonna get this fired up tonight and uh plug this mill in and uh hit that start button see what happens man i'm super stoked steve's gonna help me wash this thing down we're gonna degrease the whole thing first we're gonna hit it with the vacuum and we're gonna kind of blow it off then we're gonna degrease it then we're gonna hit it with this evapo rust shit and hopefully bring this thing back and make it look presentable because i mean she's looking she's looking uh kind of neglected and uh, we want this thing to uh, produce for us, so we're going to take good care of it and uh, try to get it back to fully operating condition, you know. So, um, be back in a minute. Okay, there you have it. That is some serious redneck engineering. So let me just show you what we got going on here. Let me take this panel off. Okay. Just uh, put that right back so we don't lose it. Take this off. And we'll open this. Okay, so we have our nice brand new uh 
220 cord. Now that is a, I got a little snippet of it right here. This was brand new. Okay, three wire, 600 volt. Um, anyway, it's pretty thick stuff. So uh, I got the new plug. Now, everything here I had. Now I did have, I did use the new plug, but I did have a brand new plug that I could have used that I found after the fact. So because I need another plug for another project, we're just gonna say I had the plug and all of this stuff uh, didn't cost me nothing. So we got a nice little extension cord on here. Comes up into here into this box that I saved from scrap. I don't know why I saved it. There was nothing in it. Um, these I pulled off of, I'm pretty sure they came off of a generator. This was actually supposed to be bolted down over here, okay? So we got 220 coming in, two 110s. The two 110s come up, they split, okay? And the ground, or neutral, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm not an electrician, so I don't know none of this stuff. Um, splits, everything splits once it reaches here, okay? So we have 220 running up, coming up to the top of the switch. This is a switch that should turn on. Uh, then we have the 220 and the ground or neutral coming down into the rotor phase, okay? Then you have the blue, the black, and the green going into the machine. And then you have the red coming back out of the machine. Okay, now what I did with the red wire is when I split this, I used the three-phase cable, okay? So there's actually four wires in this, but I'm only utilizing three of them here until we get up into here. I opened it up. This is actually continuous from here all the way to the plug. But what I did is I opened up the case from here to here, exposing the, the fourth wire okay and um, basically that is our fourth leg now tapped right in so we have out of this box straight up three phase electric coming to this thing now um, I'm going to uh, put the camera up and then we're gonna fire this thing up and see what happens um, hopefully nothing explodes <laughs> okay moment of truth now I do got my safety glasses on uh, just in case something blows up in my face um, here we go bam nothing blew up we must have did something right alright let's check some voltages now there should be no voltage coming to this uh, phase converter at the moment. Okay, I'm put this right here. We should have two forty. Wow, one twenty one. 122. Now we should have at least two legs up here. 122. 121. And then this should be our dead leg. We got 0.3 volts. Okay. Here we go. Moment of truth. I'm going to stand over here just in case something blows up out of here. Okay, nothing exploded. Okay, get a little vibration there. work on that. Oh. Oh. No, we can't have that.
Okay, she fired up, nothing happened. That vibration is driving me crazy. Let me just fire this up with nothing. Oh! This thing jumps. Alright. Much quieter. It's got a low hum. Now let's check our uh, our third leg. Wow. We got 222 volts coming on that leg. So this is, uh, we got a high leg. Now I had a shop, 220, and we got to make sure that we don't fry the machine with that high side. Um, it should be okay. Because I had a shop that had 220 with a high leg, and it was literally 110, 110, 220. This thing, what the hell is happening here? Okay. 229. So we're getting we're getting some high voltage, man. Um, we should be able to two twenty nine. Okay. So let's just go ahead and turn that off. Man, I'll tell you what, my brain hurts from trying to figure out how to get all this uh, electric, uh, this all this scrap, this is all scrap, so trying to get all this stuff to kind of work together is um, kind of mentally taxing because you know I didn't want to burn up that three-phase motor that I just had paid $900 to um, uh, have rebuilt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little research real quick to make sure that there's not a specific um, leg that you're supposed to run the high side on. I, I don't know, and I'm going to I'm going to read this schematic real quick. Um, before I plug in the milling machine. Now I, I, I know that the 220 on one leg is not a bad thing. That's just part of three phase. Um, but I'm just gonna go over this paperwork real quick. Uh, make sure, um, you know, we're doing the right thing, you know. We want to um, make sure L1, L2, T3, 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 T3 is uh, I don't think it matters. If you do not use three-phase distributed panel, run three-phase directly to the load. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Okay, we'll be back in a little bit, and then um, if everything goes well, if I, I, I like what I'm uh, reading and I see, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Um, we're going to go and uh, we're going to put this thing on the ground, and um, we're going to fire up the mill, hopefully been a long time coming okay moment of truth we got the uh, phase converter over here kind of where it's gonna be I don't know if it's gonna we're, we're gonna have to find a new home for that stuff but uh, is that switch on or off uh, it looks like it's no we want to keep that off for now okay. <laughs> Are we, plugged in? we 
we got three phase. Oh. It'd probably help if I plug the freaking mill in. Okay, twist lock. No explosions. <laughs> okay, moment of truth. Oh! Something was clicking. That's your, that's your forward reverse. I think that's high and low. we go we're in low gear low rpm 175 rpm how low can you go now this thing does say this turret head should be run through complete speed range from minimum to maximum speed at least once a day so let's go all the way down 58 rpm oh you know what we should do is put some oil in that thing right all right let's shut this thing wow straight up motor oil let's see what we got see what we got in the old Four cycle motor oil. There we go. 10W30. How do I know it's not fucked? Should we blow it out? I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, there's, there's something in there. It's hard? It's, I'm not sure. It's, it's kind of probably overfilled. Oh! It's going down. Is it? Yeah. It probably needs a lot of lube. Yeah. I see a grease fitting back here. Yeah, there's all kinds of shit. This didn't get cleaned, cleaned off either, did it? What? Any of this. None of this, dude. Yeah, we're going to degrease this whole thing. We can't even move it until we clean No, we're going to vacuum it off. Then we're going to degrease it. Let me put a little bit more in here. It came down a little bit. I need to get one of them old old time oiler cans. Yeah. Oh! Okay. <laughs> I got one. I'll bring it. I wonder, was that hot? Uh, that was forward? Which way should that spin? This way? That way? This forward. Okay. That's a little stiff. Um, this is this the lock for that? That was locked, yeah. I think it's that. That was the lock. That's a little easier. All right, let's crank this bad boy up. The motor sounds good. It better for nine hundred bucks. Oh, she's cranking up. 460 RPMs. That's a lot of torque. A lot of torque? Yeah. Alright, let's shut it down and put it in high. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna back it down a little bit. So it starts in low. Man, these knobs haven't been turned in years. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm pretty sure this is the brake. It's got a brake. Okay. Yeah, and I can lock it. <laughs> what 
What do you think? Should I, hold on. Should I turn this by hand? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. That seems like a more, a better way of doing it than just yeah. jamming it in gear. Okay, we're in gear. Uh, we're unlocked. We're high. Oh, look at that. She's spinning, dude. 800. 900, 1,080, 1,200, 1,500. See, the same system that's on here is what I want on my wire stripper. So when I pull back on that handle, we start sending some copper into the wall, bro. <laughs> Let's crank this bad boy all the way up. Oh. Wow. Oh. You don't like that. Probably have to put some grease on it. Really? Looks like she's tapping out at 3,900. What do you mean they all do that? Really? Man, I almost, I, we need to make some chips, bro. She's running good. I don't even hear that thing over there. <laughs> How fast are you going? We're about 1,800. We'll be a good speed to cut steel. Slower than that. Slower than that? Turn your, turn your speed up and your speed down. If you want to hog metal. You'll be low gear. Oh, low gear, huh? Yeah. Like if you have uh, one of your big cutters on there, where's your cutters at? They're over there, some are over here. If you have one of your big cutters on there, you want to fucking make a big path, you turn your speed up and your speed down. Okay, hey, let's see if... Uh, well, you'll be in low gear, you don't need your torque. Let's see if the reverse works. Brake, the brake works really good. Yeah, yeah, Ready? That's spinning the same we way. Do the transmission over here. This has to be. This has to be moved. You put that in high gear. Reverse this over here. And it'll go in reverse from there. You know what I mean? We don't need that. Huh? We don't need that yet. We don't need that yet. I don't think so. You got to shift it up there to get reverse. I forget what it is, man. You got to get high gear, reverse, high gear, and there we go. Here we go. We're in low right now. But wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Isn't this supposed to reverse the motor? Yeah. There it is. Yeah. I think it reverses in the transmission. It reverses the transmission? Yeah. No, look. I just went from forward to reverse okay. with the switch. Is that a reversing motor? Yeah. Is it? This switch is going forward reverse. Okay. I don't know why it didn't do it the first time. That was really weird. Was I just delusional and didn't turn it the right way? I have been working kind of all day. It shouldn't matter where anything else is set if it's a reversing motor. That's what I'm saying. When I hit that switch earlier, that spindle should reverse no matter what speed we were in. Yeah. But what, what, what do we need reverse for? Power tapping? No, you're, you're, you have a clutch in your tap. In your tapping thing. When you, when you push it down, it goes clockwise. When you lift it up, it, it, it goes back. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a reverse and clutch in there. Okay. For tapping. All right, man. We need to vacuum this thing off. Yeah. And uh, hit this thing with some yeah. degreaser. Where is all that? You gonna be up for a minute? Man, it's getting late, dude. I know. Did you sleep today? <laughs> no. You didn't. All right, we're gonna uh, attempt to see what see what kind of damage is going on here with this. Man, that's scary. That's scaring me. <laughs> see what we got.
this one? What kind of flyer do you want? Uh, what do you think? Channel off, I guess. Yeah. I literally just put this on earlier today. It was a third channel off right there on the road. Like a whole lot of brass right here. This is what worries me, dude. Look at that. Look okay. how much. You just see it's falling out of there. Whoops. That's a steel. 
for a bearing. Well, we're going to have to replace bearing. all this, dude. Okay, well, that goes in and out. There you go. That's not right, dude. That's like a whole, almost one full rotation of travel before it engages with that. Okay, this thing tries to come off, man. Here's your light. You, uh, Okay, about so mm -hmm. no step through. What about the bottom of this? We might have to take the bottom of this off. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me at all. I know this comes off. You got some screws. Okay. Let me just so we're missing, put this on here for now. We're not powered up, are we? No, no, no. We got no power. No. I mean, this is turned. What's happening? We're in neutral. That'll turn when we engage. If we engage that like that, see how it went up? Yeah. See how it's going up? It's engaging that gear. Okay. We have something over here. We have a gear over here. Yeah. It doesn't look too healthy. Man, I can't believe that's plastic. I know. Something. Something's going on over on this. Alright, look at it. Let me get up under there. I gotta get on the floor. There's a thing. <sighs> Probably should raise this thing up so it's we're not down. so far down. You want me to raise it up a little? No, oh, that's the little gear. That's what turns it. What I'm seeing, let me see that light. I'm seeing four Allen keys. Oh, and there's another switch down here. I wonder what that switch does. That. There's a switch. This is, I think this is the reset over here. Uh, we got we got some crusty lines uh yeah. i wonder why there's two why are there two i'm not sure lines going to this one's going to be a readout and one's going to be power huh why would it oh yeah that is going to this thing here oh you know what that is dude that's the automatic stops so you can't power feed Bastard. past where you're supposed to go. We gotta straighten up them things. Yeah. And then they're adjustable. Yeah, dude, I'm not, I'm not. Really gonna really it ain't happening tonight. Okay. That's gonna be a whole project there. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of reassemble this I'll gently so we don't lose nothing. I would know. Yeah, I'm getting him over here tomorrow, dude. We probably help set this up. Or just, just it down Damn, there. dude, you remember where them shims went? The date they came on first, and then that thing came on. That's a nice little. I think that's stainless. And then this. Keyway. Now so, what's fucked up in there, man? Why is it thing flipping? So the this keyway messed up? there's a pin right there. We need to pop that pin out somehow. There's a spring in there. Yeah. Why is it there's a flip when you push push it in? Because it's 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 uh you on your key? Can you see the key on your side? The key's down. There it okay, is. you're on. I had to beat this fucker on earlier. Okay, well, make it click. See, you're supposed to push it all the way in and it engages. Okay, well, you're locked up on yeah. the carriage. But it's, it's like, it's not doing they're anything. worn out. Some, the, the teeth are worn out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think he was probably using the power feed. Yeah, for a long time, not using that. Yeah. So... That's going to be a job for another day. we got to have that be able to move this thing. Huh? we got to be able to move this thing. For your, when you get close to your final size, you're going to want to be able to move this thing to your, to your final right. size. And yeah. You're only going to be taking a few thousand maybe in the last pass. You can't do that. Get that I don't know, speed. man. I kind of like these wheels, dude. Get rid of this fucking handle and put a wheel on there. 
Yeah. You know? You got one? No, but we can we can make one, I we're guess. Plug the, <laughs> make our own fucking handle. Plug the lathe in. Um. No, let's let's uh, okay. work on that another day. I mean, it should just fire right up, but I want to clean it off and look at all that shit in there. I mean, it should fire right up. If this thing fired right up, no problem. But we just can't run them both at the same time right now. Is that a speed control on your shop? I what think is, it is. What's that guy here? Yeah, different speeds and feeds and all kinds of shit. Yours don't have that? No. That might have a variable speed drive like this thing yeah. has, and yours just has them pulleys you change. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. Um, we got a lot more work here, but at least this thing fired up after literally four years uh, ago, that first video that I made when I pulled the motor off, um, which is kind of crazy, but hey, you know what? Full circle, man. Yeah. Um, we got ourselves a nice, nice little three phase setup over there in the corner. We're going to uh, work on getting this one set up. Now, when I first had this, you can actually see it in the video. It had the box with the capacitors. I got to call Neil because my dumbass, I wind up giving it to him. He wind up sending it out to have it tested. It cost him $100 to have it tested. They said the motor's good, the capacitors were bad. And then he didn't want it because he has a shop with three phase now. So I actually bought it back from him for $100. Um, but it didn't come back with the capacitor bank. And there might be some electronics in there like that one has. So we'll, we'll figure it out. But at least we got, um, this was a huge, huge, um, uh, yeah, a huge milestone we achieved today with getting three phase in the shop. This thing actually running uh, after a year and a half of me having that motor just sit there and uh, this thing being on a pallet for a year and a half. So uh, we're going to get this thing cleaned up in the next uh, video and, um, you know, we're going to start making some chips and then we're going to get right back on the stator record because now I can make the parts I need for that I can make the parts I need for this the parts I need for the granulator we're gonna be making everything <laughs> so if you come this far thanks for watching stay tuned we are going next level over here at project shop I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard.
That's a nice little chunk right there. You get a better view. This thing is still slow as molasses. everything out and you can see the glue in there but this is nowhere near uh, full of glue like that other one 